Welcome back. We're here at Liberty Media's Investor Conference, bringing you, of course, uh, a lot of different news about a lot of different things, including the consumer, the ad market. There's a lot of other things we're going to talk to uh, with my next guest. He's Greg Maffei, of course, the CEO of Liberty Media. Good to see you. Thank you, David. Thanks Sorry. for having me. You're welcome. Sorry it's been a year, but happy to, uh, to see you. Um, well, you've got some news this morning involving the Formula One or Liberty Media itself in terms of the Atlanta Braves. So why don't we just start with the news there? You're going to split off the Braves, create a new Liberty Live tracking stock. Why are you doing this? Well, I think by creating a separate asset-backed Braves and by isolating within our tracking stock structure our stake in Live Nation, we have an opportunity to show, the, highlight the value of those assets, give investors greater choice, and create future flexibility for any kind of transaction we, we might want. What does that mean, any future transaction you might want? Well, if we wanted to combine with somebody else, if we wanted to join, to bring somebody else in, it's, it's a crisper structure. It's a, it's a, how long is it going to take to get done, Greg? I would think we'll probably have it done in six, eight months at the most. Um, and the Braves themselves, I mean, sorry. Of course, we both, both our teams won over 100 games, fought both. it down to the, uh, the wire, and then... It, it was a great battle. And then 87 wins. I mean, 87 wins. And, then, yeah, and clearly, the, the Phillies got hot, and full credit to them. But I think the Astros were a stronger team, and you sort of saw the Phillies, even though they were strong, kind of ran out of gas at the end. So when the Atlanta Braves trade is sort of their own pure equity and people are making a decision based simply on the fortunes of the team and the real estate around it, what is the argument for growth there? Well, I seen, think we've seen great growth at uh, the Braves, both by growing, as you pointed out, the real estate, but importantly, the on-field uh, performance. I think we have fourth highest attendance of any team. We've had the 20 plus percent growth. We have the highest utilization of our stadium. We have relatively low ticket prices with an opportunity to grow them. So there's a lot of ways in which the Braves are an attractive economic asset. All right, let's talk about Formula One, another asset that you've been talking about. And interestingly, I've gotten a lot of incoming inquiries from. There does seem to be investor interest in part because the sport is growing. Yes. That Netflix show has clearly helped you a lot. Drive to Survive has been a great asset. Um, what are the growth prospects at Formula One, particularly when it comes to another venue, perhaps, here in the United States? You're in Austin and Miami. Uh, Las Vegas is starting when? Next year. And is November there... 23. Okay. Uh, and is there the possibility of growing to a fourth city? Well, I think we'll probably digest the three and we'll see where we go. The reality is, is we have a lot of ways to grow the sport. We've increased the number of races. We've increased the revenue we get per race. We've increased the TV viewership and what we get paid notably here in the U.S., uh, and we've increased our advertising and sponsorship with some great new partnerships with people like Salesforce and MSC and AWS becoming a global partner. So lots of ways we're growing the revenue stream. Um, crypto is an important sponsor of some of this stuff. Does it have an impact in terms of the collapse of them, particularly when it comes to the ad dollars? Yeah, some of the teams have important partnerships, but frankly, Liberty Parent, or excuse me, Formula One at our level, we do have a partnership with Crypto.com. We feel reasonably confident in it. Look, when we put our business case together for Formula One, uh, it really didn't have a lot of crypto sponsors in it. So anything we get is kind of a lucky strike extra, to use a John Malone phrase. And do you think that they will be easily replaced, though? Oh, yeah. We have a ton of demand. You First do. of all, I think they're going to honor their commitment. But secondly, we have a ton of demand. Well, it's hard to honor your commitment when you're bankrupt. I mean, it depends. We'll see. <laughs> Crypto.com is not bankrupt yet. Understood. Understood. I was talking about FTX. Um, any chance New York? Uh, there was some talk that you were talking to Mayor Adams here in New York, Randall's Island. Is that a possibility at some point for, for an F1 race? New York is a beautiful city, but I think it would be a very difficult city to pull off a race. You do? Yeah, the politics are tough, even it, despite the mayor's support. Yeah, well, you know, we have all these politicians who like to get involved. In fact, there was uh, once uh, the possibility of Amazon having a big headquarters here, but a politician named uh, uh, AOC uh, was opposed. She's um, figuring into your business again. Reminder, Ticketmaster owned by Live Nation, 30 plus percent owned by Liberty. Yes. Um, so this tweet, daily reminder, Ticketmaster's monopoly, its merger with Live Nation should never have been approved and they need to be reined in. This in response to all those enraged fans of Taylor Swift who weren't able to get tickets. How do you respond to that? Well, I'm first and all the Live Nation team is sympathetic that the long wait times and fans who couldn't get what they wanted. Uh, reality is, it's a function of the massive demand that Taylor Swift has. Uh, the site was supposed to be opened up for 1.5 million verified Taylor Swift fans. Uh, we had 14 million people hit the site, including bots, another story, which are not supposed to be there. And despite all the challenges and the breakdowns, we did sell over 2 million tickets that day. We could have filled 900 stadiums. And the reality is, is 
this is not actually a Live Nation promoted concert. Taylor Swift is promoted by one of our largest competitors. So though AOC may not like every element of our business, interestingly, AEG, our competitor, who is the promoter for Taylor Swift, chose to use us because we are, the, in reality, the largest and most effective ticket seller in the world. Even our competitors want to come on our platform. All right, but you're getting overwhelmed still. It's not the first time. Is there a way to get around this? Is there a way to avoid this where everybody's, you know, I got a 17-year-old daughter. She's pissed. Well, I'm, I apologize to your daughter, and I apologize to all our fans. We are working hard on this. And again, you know, building capacity for peak demand is something we attempt to do, but this exceeded every expectation. And the reality is Taylor Swift hasn't been on the road for three or four years, and that's caused a huge issue.